Hello everyone, my name is Amber. Welcome, welcome back to my channel, Amber Reads Romance. Um, today I just started listening to a book. Um, I haven't really got far into it or anything, and I thought it might be a good idea to vlog it, so I'm just randomly doing this right now from my car. Um, I am actually decided to finally read the Bridgerton series. I know I'm super late to this party. Um, it's such a beloved series. It's got the Netflix show, all of that going on. I haven't watched the show and I haven't read any of the books. So I decided to read The Duke and I for the Romance Readathon this month. And, um, as I started this, I thought it might be kind of fun to vlog, um, reading the entire series. Now, obviously, I'm not going to put the entire series in one vlog. That would be forever with the way I talk. So I might do a vlog per book, or I might do a couple books per vlog. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. Depends on how long I talk or <laughs> how I'm feeling about this. Um, hopefully, I'm going to enjoy this series because I know it's very hyped and very loved. Um, I've actually never read Julia Quinn before, so I'm really excited to get started. So I'm going to start with The Duke and I, obviously, the first book and see how uh, this goes. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you can, please like and subscribe um, to my channel. Um, and I am actually just going to start listening to an audiobook today at work. And so I will follow up with you guys and update probably, um, hopefully around the 40% mark. I'm not, I'm trying not to do so many check-ins on my vlogs because they have been kind of long lately. So I do, um, want to try and keep it a little shorter. So I will check in with you guys after I've gotten a little bit further into the Duke and I. Hey guys, um, I just got home from work, so I thought I would stop here real quick in my car and give you guys an update. I did listen to about, I think, half of the book so far. Um, I am enjoying it. I think that Julia Quinn's writing is really easy to listen to as I'm listening to it, obviously. Um, I'm enjoying the audiobook, um, good narration. Um, but I am thinking it's a little slow, but I do think that has to do with it being an intro book. So it's a great introduction to this family, the Bridgertons. So far, that's the main takeaway that I'm, I'm kind of enjoying the different family members, and I think that they'll be really great you know, it did, like how you go through the series with each family member. So I like a couple of her brothers, but the big one I love is like her mother, um, the heroine Daphne, her mother is just so funny. Um, she was making me laugh a lot. Um, and I just, I really like it. I think it's neat. The gossip column kind of thing in the beginning of each chapter, kind of doing her little, it's almost like gossip girl kind of feeling to me. And so I really liked that. I thought it was really funny that um, when she's talking about the Bridgertons and how they all look the same. And then you also have them like all like as I think there's eight kids. I might be wrong on that. But as each one was born, it was like down the alphabet. So A, A B, C, D. So I thought that that was funny. Um, so I'm really enjoying the introduction to this family. I think it's really cute. Um, I'm not totally, it's not blowing me away. It's not this really sweeping, amazing, beautiful romance at all. But I did really enjoy the character of Simon. Um, the intro to this book starts right off with like learning about Simon and how he was born and, um, everything that he's been through. So, um, his mother had a hard time conceiving. She had multiple miscarriages and, um, I think a couple still, stillbirths, sorry. And so, um, she was told not to have another child, that it's too dangerous, but her and her husband basically were like, no, we're going to keep, cause he needed an heir. He was, it was like everything he cared about was having another, an heir and carrying down his line. Um, so they do end up having Simon. He is born healthy and, um, but the mother dies after childbirth, which was sad because it seemed like the Duke didn't even fucking care. Like the father, I hate his father. I hate him. He's a douchebag. Um, and he was just kind of like, oh, well she did her purpose. Like, fuck you. Anyways, so Simon, as he's growing, he's like a couple years old, like the Duke, his father like comes back to try and teach him like how to be a Duke. And I'm like, he's two. 
but he realizes he's not talking because he hasn't really been there. He's been in a different home. And um, his nurse, like, governess kind of explains, yeah, he's, it's a little bit slower than, you know, other kids, but it's fine. Um, but as he's getting older, like, he's still not talking. And so the Duke, like, basically threatens to beat him to get him to talk, which is just disgusting. And so the kid, poor kid, like, screams out, like, no, don't hit me, but he stutters. And the father is, like, disgusted. He's like, I have a moron for a son. Like, he's an idiot, which is just horrible. And so he basically leaves to go live at the other home, kind of abandons his son. And his son, like, works really hard with his nurse and governess to, like, like be able to talk better, work on his stutter. And he writes all these letters to his father. His father never responds to any of them. So he goes and visits to try and show his dad that he's better, you know, that he's doing better. But his dad, like, literally made it seem like his son was dead, his servant, so that upsets his son, obviously, and he ends up kind of stuttering. So his father continues to berate him and make him feel like he's an idiot. It's just, um, it's so sad. So Simon, needless to say, grows up hating his father. He goes to Oxford, I believe, and he's really intelligent. He does well. He's worked on his stutter. He speaks fine now, although he does still have to be, like, careful because in certain situations he can get flustered and it can happen again. And now um, he has actually stayed away this whole till his father died, and now he's back, and he happens to be best friends with Daphne's older brother, Anthony. And so he ends up running into Daphne, a little meet cute at a at a like a ball or whatever. And she has had multiple suitors, but she's not interested in any of them. And she um, kind of like has turned down a couple marriage proposals. And one guy that she's currently like being harassed by, um, Simon tries to step in to like help out. But um, it's just a funny little meet cute. He's super attracted to her. But then he finds out that it's his best friend's little sister. So he doesn't really pursue things there. Um, they do dance. And he ends up like coming up with a plan. A little proposal of his own. Where um, he does not want to get married. He never wants to get married. And he knows that all these mothers are going to try and get their daughters like engaged to him. And pursue him. So he basically um, comes up with an idea that they could fake date or he could court her so that he will bring more attention to her. She'll get more suitors, like better suitors than what she was getting. And then he'll be able to like not have all these mothers try to get him to marry their daughters. So they start fake dating. He does like kind of a public courting to make it look real. It was really cute because he like brought flowers for her mother. And I just love her mother. There was cute little like date scenes and all that. So there's really great banter, slow build, like a really good like friendship that builds between them. Um, and um, right now, obviously, um, I'm at the part where feelings have caught on. Daphne is like pretty much knows she's in love with him. And she ends up kind of ha trying to pursue him a little bit. And they start making out and getting frisky out in the gardens at a ball. And lo and behold, her older brother, Anthony, discovers them. And he was already not okay with Simon pursuing his sister. Even when he finds out it's a fake dating, he doesn't want him really around his sister because he knows how Simon was. And so he loses it, attacks him. And it's like a whole crazy little scene of him attacking him. Uh, Daphne like getting thrown into like these hedges and it's cutting up her dress and all of that. So um, he ends up saying like, you're going to marry my sister. And Simon's saying, no, like I'm never getting married. If I could, it would be with her, but I can't get married. I can't do it. And so basically her, her brother says, okay, well then we're going to duel. And so she's really hurt because she's like, okay, so you'd rather die than marry me. And so it's, he's going to have this duel. She's trying to figure out how to stop this. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. I think her other brother, Colin's going to like help her get to this duel to try and put a stop to this, um, <laughs> this idiotic, you know, thing that they're doing. So I'm enjoying it. It's not like amazing or like a beautiful romance or anything, but it's cute. 
and I'm enjoying the writing. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to try and get further um, into the book and then I will follow up with you guys um, in a little bit. Okay. See you on the next one. Hey guys, uh, just checking in. Um, I had to do another check-in. Um, I'm about, I think like 78% through the book and I'm pissed. So a totally different feeling than my last check-in because this book just took a turn and it was for the worse. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna take this book now. I honestly was feeling like this was a four star book, a solid four star book at the beginning half. I think it was really good. I had good banter. I had good setup for the family and, you know, building like this kind of world and environment of the Bridgertons. I really enjoyed it. I loved Simon's character. Um, I actually liked Daphne too. Like I found her really endearing and everything. And they had really good like friendship that was building. Um, but now I've turned, I don't like Daphne. I'm pretty pissed off. So what ends up happening is um, my last check-in, basically they um, get caught. He's going to go to a duel with her brother. She ends up getting there to stop it and basically kind of gets him to agree to marry her. So he's kind of being like pressured into marrying her. Um, he says like he can't have children. And she's like, that's fine. Like, she's like, what's more important to me? Children are just this idea or something that I want. But Simon is something I really want. I want to say, I don't want him to die. You know, and she's in love with him. And so she says, it's fine, whatever. Um, so they decide they're going to have like this kind of fast wedding. Um, one of the funny scenes was a scene between her and her mother where her mother's trying to explain sex to her. So I thought that that was funny. I did think it's a little ridiculous how little she knows about sex. I mean, maybe that's how it really was back then. But I'm like, how can you be that clueless? I don't know. Um, because she assumes him saying, I can't have children. He's saying he can never have children. Like, He's unable to, um, but really he does not want to have children. So they get married. They have their wonderful sex life that they're enjoying sex to each other, which it was okay. Like I wasn't really that into the sex scenes. They were just okay to me. Honestly, I didn't really connect to these characters as like another historical romance author I would have. Um, but it was okay. I was decent. And then things take a turn because she realizes that he it's not that he can't have kids. It's that he doesn't want to have kids. And she feels lied to, even though I'm like, he literally told it to you. It's just the phrasing that he said. And you were fine with that going in. Now, I myself, I get her wanting to have children and feeling like, you know, this marriage is less than. But, like, they love each other. Um, she should respect his wishes. She finds out the truth about Simon and his father and why he feels the way he feels. He does not want to have children. He does not want to let his father win. Which is kind of ridiculous. It's like your father's dead. Live your life. Um, but he doesn't want to carry on the line. He doesn't want to be like the perfect duke and all that kind of stuff. So this is where it takes a turn. I've already given you lots of plots and explained things. But this is big spoilers. So if I remember, hopefully I do. I'll put a spoiler thing up here. Because this is where it turned for me. She literally moves out of their bedroom. They were sharing a bedroom. And like because he won't have a baby with her basically. Um, and then she, he gets drunk and he ends up kind of with her and everything. And she's going to let him like sleep in her bed or whatever. And then he's pretty wasted and he's passed out. And she decides to basically rape him. I don't care. It's sexual assault. Um, if it was happening to a female in this book, we would be upset. And especially in historical romance, this isn't a dark romance where somnophilia can be kind of a thing and, and dark romances are like, you know, hooking up with them while they're asleep. I've seen that. Not a fan of it. Um, no kink shaming if that's your thing. Go for it. But I have not seen this kind of behavior in a historical romance and where a woman is taking advantage of a man who's drunk and, you know, he, of course, gets sexual. Of course, he's going to. And he they start to have sex. But she literally manipulates the situation, takes advantage of him so that he isn't going to be able to pull out so she can get have him come inside her and she can get pregnant. 
And he is so betrayed and devastated and infuriated that she does that. And I'm sorry, I'm infuriated. I don't like her now because that is such a manipulative, fucked up, devious thing to do to the man you love. You guys could work through things and see down the line if he could change his mind. You don't take advantage of the situation. And it seemed like she kind of got off on her taking control and having control in that situation. And it just made me despise her. So I was pretty pissed off. Um, then you have her going home because he's pissed. He like leaves and they're not around each other for a couple months. And she like goes home to her family. Does she tell her family that it's, she's the one that fucked up? No, they think that it's Simon and that's why she's there. And lo and behold, guess what? She's pregnant. So I'm pissed. Um, this is literally gone from like a four star to a two star because of this act alone. I don't know how you can redeem yourself as a heroine from betraying his trust and taking advantage of him and going against his wishes. Um, it's so selfish. And I've never seen a heroine do that in a historical romance before. So it's pretty polarizing. So I don't know. I don't know how I'm feeling about this book. I think I'm 78, 80% through. So we'll see if the end kind of brings it back up. I honestly doubt it. I mean, she better fucking grovel because she fucked up. She's in the wrong. She's in the wrong. And I really loved Simon. Even though his whole thing of like, I'm not going to let my father win, so I'm not going to have kids, and I'm not going to be a duke because I don't want my father to win. It's kind of stupid, but you get what he's been through his whole life. And this stupid little bitch betrayed him. So I'm kind of upset. <laughs> We'll see how it goes. I'm sorry. I've already ranted too long about this. So I will see you um, once I finish the book and we'll see what I give it. Hey guys. So I am here to do my last check-in for the Duke and I. Um, I'm pretty frustrated with this book. Um, it honestly, I you probably in my previous <laughs> check-in, I did rant a little bit about the essay that I feel like was non-consent. Um, even if, say, you didn't think that that was um, sexual assault or anything like that, um, she definitely did not get his consent to try and force him, him, him to have, get her pregnant. Like, he did not want to have a baby. He did not want to do that. And she took that choice away from him. And uh, reading a historical romance, that is the last thing you want your heroine to do. So I was very frustrated by that. I also... What kept this book down for me is the fact that, like, he left and she went off to her family and, like, didn't tell them what she did. So he was kind of seen as, like, the bad guy. And then finally when, and she wasn't pregnant. She thought she was pregnant, but it didn't happen. But when he comes, like, after her and everything, like, he's the one kind of apologizing. She's not, didn't even grovel. She was the one in the wrong, yet, like, he was there, like, apologizing for lying and kind of, like, begging, like, wanting to be with her. So, I did not like that because this girl needed to freaking grovel. So, I ended up giving this book two stars. It started out, the first half of this book is a four-star book. It was so funny, cute, charming, great banter. I really did like the writing. I just didn't like Julia Quinn's choice. I don't know how they're going to make that work in the Netflix show. Again, I've never seen it. Um, so I'd be interested to see how that plays out. But honestly, like, it was not for me. Not to say I'm not going to continue with the series. I think I'm going to vlog each of these books maybe and we'll see how far I get. But I did hear the second one um, is better and it's her older brother Anthony. And so I'm really excited because I liked his character. Um, so I'm excited to maybe read that one and hopefully have a better experience. But this one I gave two stars and it did have some good sexy times in it. Um, but I didn't care enough about them as a, a relationship kind of you know like I mean I was kind of I was working so I wasn't totally in like focused in on these sex scenes but they were pretty good for her historical romance I just didn't think I really connected to it he was kind of like forced to marry her too so it just felt like he was forced into this whole dynamic that like you know he didn't want 
So, um, two stars. Um, good writing. I love the, like, the whole premise of the Bridgerton so far. Can't wait to continue. I do love the mother for some reason. I just love her. So I am excited to continue. We'll see how I think the rest of the series is going to go. Hopefully it gets better. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you can, please remember to like and subscribe. And let me know what you thought of that, that scene. Because, I don't know, maybe I'm like one of the only ones that was upset by that. Although I did see a lot of people on Goodreads kind of had the same thoughts, but there are people that gave that five stars or four stars. So let me know if you <laughs> have read this book and what you thought of that. Um, thank you so much again, and I will see you on the next one.